Well, we're picking up where we left off on the railroad. Oh, it's it's progressing. It's progressing, and I love how the roots have turned out. And uh, but we've got these empty ponds. Yeah, that was the scary part. And and in the real world, you run into empty ponds, right. so that isn't a bad thing. But we're going to be filling the ponds this week with this stuff: um, woodland scenics deep pour water clear. Oh, because it's in the mountains, and you expect the water to be crystal crystal clear so this is what we're using and this is what we tested and so rather than reinvent the wheel we said let's fill the ponds with that stuff because look at that it works well it works really 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 well boy that stuff is expensive oh it adds up too because a little doesn't go a long way <laughs> no but it's such a great product you know it's not well it looks good yeah. and, and we've tested it and we like it and and you go with what looks good well this does it looks really really good Anyway, let's get started. We need to first prepare the bottom of the ponds. Ooh. And uh, after doing the, the test section, I figured out how to paint rocks so that they look mossy. Oh my. <laughs> and it starts off with a process that doesn't look good at all. And that's putting this bright yellow paint down there. Um, and that doesn't seem to, to work at all. You also need to keep in mind when you're working with acrylics that the color you get when they dry is not the color you're getting when you're putting down. No, especially the cheaper ones. So you need to you need to test everything and find out because this bright bright yellow actually dries to a kind of uh, dark dark yellow. Oh. Then I come in and I just spritz the crap out of it with water because uh, nothing looks like wet mossy rocks than you know, actually having them wet while you're putting the, the paint on. So once they're good and saturated, then I come back with green paint and just kind of daub the green into the wet. And um, and again, it looks like, what are you using fluorescent green paint for? Well, it doesn't dry to no, that color. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. <laughs> And uh, fortunately, because it's paint, you know, if, if it dries and it doesn't look right, just spritz it down and, and dry brush and, and do whatever you have to do to, to, to mute these colors. But this is actually going to look pretty decent once it dries. Right. Uh, but the key is to put this stuff on in this really, really wet environment because in the real world, that's how moss is applied. Boy, is it ever a wet environment. In a very, very, <laughs> very wet environment. And I, and I did get a little bit carried away in a couple of places. And uh, this section right here, once this dried, it was like, you know, way too much green. A lot of green. Way too much green here. So I just came back in and dry brushed some tan yes tone it down a bit down. <laughs> and i left the green down in the cracks right. which looks a lot more like moss down in there now the big pond wow <sighs> i've been losing sleep over the big pond and one of the problems is we've got an exposed section here so you can see what's going on underwater and we tested the idea of masking across and buffing that area out. Anyway, the only thing that seemed to make sense was to use clear acrylic sheet. Right. And just build a little dam here out of clear acrylic sheet, pour up against it, uh, make sure everything's level because the, mm -hmm. the, 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 the pour's gonna be level. Exactly. <laughs> so the sheet has to be perfectly level or it'll just find one corner and pour out. And these are those fish you made. Right. The fishy fish. Yes. And um, that's one of the reasons why we want to be able to see what's going on under the water is because there's all these fish yes. in the big pond. And so I started putting those in place. They, they stand on a little wire that goes through the bottom of the pond. And I was concerned that that would leave a hole in the bottom of the pond and the, the acrylic would pour right, not the acrylic, uh, but the, the stuff, whatever it is, would pour and leak right through there. Wouldn't that be awful <sighs> at the price? At the, and, and, and just it would destroy everything and when we just have a big mess. So I wanted to make sure that I was putting a lot of white glue down into those holes and then everything later on was sealed right with a with a sealant that woodland scenic says you should, should seal everything with but this way i was certain that the the holes underneath the fish wouldn't be drains exactly and drain the pond onto the floor which would just 
that would that would be, that would be bad. That would be bad. That, yes. If you look up bad in the dictionary, there's a picture yes, there of your be pond a leaking on the yes. floor. Yes. Yeah. So this is the stuff that Woodland Scenics says to seal the bottom of your pond with. Very good. Before you pour, scenic cement. Th that's what we need. That's what we need, and I'm pretty convinced all this is is Mod Podge, Matt Mod Podge. <laughs> Wow. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna tempt fate. If Woodland Scenic says use this and then use this and then use this, I'm gonna just stick with the instructions. There you go. Because I know I won't go wrong if I just follow the instructions. So they said put a good coating of scenic cement over everything. Okay. <clears throat> I did not put it over the fish because I was afraid it might react with that. But I, it soaks down into the cracks, and I was paranoid enough about this that I actually put two coats there on. There you go. Because, darn it, we're going to make sure the bottom of this is sealed. But I also found that sometimes I didn't want to do this. In the big pond, I did. But one of the reasons they say to do this is if you're using scenic materials, when you pour uh, the, the, the deep pour water on there, it soaks in and creates a big like slick I not oil slick but but like a big greasy spot because it soaks oh. into your scenery and it capillates up and you end up with all of this stuff looks like you spilled oil all over oh, your oh no but there's places where I want that look oh okay so over under the big bridge I'm not gonna do this because I want it to soak in oh because you get a particularly wet look uh -huh. When it soaks into the dirt, it looks like wet mud. Okay. So uh, when we get over there, you'll see how that works. But th that looks pretty neat. Yeah. In the meantime, I want to make sure that all this stuff, all these little ponds that we're pouring over here are sealed. Right. So I'm putting a nice double coat, two coats of this stuff over everything. Okay. That we'll be pouring here. Now, of course, we've already covered how these ponds were built in previous videos. Uh, the fallen log and your cattails mm -hmm. and all the little vegetation that you've built. But um, there it is with the, the scenic cement down in there. And now we're going to let this scenic cement dry for two whole days. Wow. They don't say to let it dry for two whole days, but I'm the paranoid type. <laughs> <laughs> then we'll let it, let it dry for two days. So we'll let it dry for two days. Now, the other issue is where I've put in the, acryl, the clear acrylic sheet. Don't say that quickly. Mm -mm. And I'm concerned that, that that crack around the edge here is going to leak like crazy because it will. The scenic cement isn't going to fill that, so I'm using clear silicone caulk, just like in a, a shower stall. And I'm making darn sure that that crack is all sealed in. Right. And now we're ready to proceed Ooh. with the uh, the deep pour water, <laughs> following the instructions. And again, we tested this, so I'm I'm pretty comfortable right now in how to proceed. The one thing I have done is thrown away some of the stuff that comes in the Woodland Scenics uh, kit and replaced it with something proper, better rubber gloves. Uh, a real gradiated cup instead of using a plain cup with a decal stuck to it. And then we found these disposable syringes. Right. Um, because what I was trying to do pouring down a stick wasn't, wasn't working. That wasn't working as well, Mom. Now you want to heat this stuff up and from messing around with it, they, they say put it in a plastic bag and I couldn't figure that out. Well, it's because the labels on here aren't waterproof. Oh. So you stand it in the water and your label falls off. Okay, I can deal with that. I, I don't want to have to deal with the plastic bag and I, I'll just keep track of which bottle is which. Yeah, small bottle is this, big bottle is that. <laughs> yeah, and know that the labels are going to fall off as, as soon as I stand them in hot water. And then this is the, uh, the gradiated cup, the graduated cup that we found on Amazon. That because the one they send you is just a plain cup and then they give you a decal to put on here and if you get the decal on wrong and all your measurements are wrong. There, yeah, and I just like this idea much better. Uh, this yeah, When I fill this up to three ounces, I know it's three ounces. Now you use uh, two to one mix and notice when you pour the activator on top of there, it just literally floats on top of there. That is weird. And it looks crystal clear in the bottle, but once you pour it in here, you can see it is not crystal clear no at all. not even at any rate once it's all stirred up it really and truly is crystal clear 
Now to put this uh, into the small ponds, I wanted to use the syringe that we found. Right. Because you need to get down in and among your vegetation, and if you spill this on your vegetation, you're really going to oh, be upset what a about mess. that. Right. So this way, I can really control where I'm putting the mixture, and it's got a good working time. Right. So you don't really need to worry about it setting up in the syringe. You've got, you know, I don't know, 15 or 20 minutes before it really starts setting up. But that way, you can put it exactly where you want it. And then, in this case, I decided I wanted more, so I just came back and added some more. Oh, cool. From a second mix. Nice. So you can do that. You're not stuck with what you've done. You can always add more to it. Look how neat that mossy bottom. That is neat. And it isn't that it's floating up. It's just that's how I painted it down in there. But it really looks like it's mixing into the water. It does. Now, over here on the somewhat larger pond, um, here again, just uh, pouring that stuff in there using the syringe because it's all down in and around the vegetation here. Right. And if I tried any other way to get it down in there, I'd get it all over the vegetation. As it is, it tends to sort of creep up the banks. Oh, it does, doesn't it? Wow. And we found that in the test. Mm -hmm. And the fix for that is to just come back after everything is set up with flat clear. Right. And then paint out those glossy areas. And now... Over here, this is where water from those ponds is leaking down under the bridge at Bottleneck Creek. And there's other products that they say to use for this. Um, but I really like how this turned out. The key is you've definitely got to come back afterwards and use a flat clear sure. to flatten out the areas that are you know that have picked up the gloss that you don't want but I want the the glossy material down in and among the rocks right just the top of the rock needs to be dry so I can come back now and uh, lightly brush over the top of all of this with flat clear so that it doesn't just look like you spilled clear plastic all over right here. yeah because that that's that's not the look I want but no. it's, it's close to it very close and that that will look great now Here's where I didn't seal it. Ooh. So I wanted this to soak in because I found that that produces a really interesting look. And uh, there's a lot of exposed uh, squirrel dirt oh. here. So I've used that, that dirt, uh, the squirrel variety of the dirt, and then a lot of just natural rocks and stuff. And then I haven't sealed it with the scenic cement. And look how it's soaking in. I see. To the sand and everything. And doesn't that look neat? It looks just like mud. Yeah. Wow. It looks more like a, a stream that's coming down through that. Right. And I know that now it's going to capillate up through that material and, and into places that I don't really want it. But I'll come back and, and dry brush those areas. And I'm also going to use some grass tufts. Oh, to, to hide where it's soaked into, because you can see how far up onto the banks. Oh, sure. It's just capillated up into all kinds of places uh, I don't want it. Right, I can see. So I'll have to hide that, Ooh. but look where it has soaked in down I in like among that. the rocks. Isn't that, that a is neat just, look? That is just, wow. So I'm really happy with that. I just need to get rid of the areas where, but you can see what happens if you don't use scenic cement. Yes, exactly. It just soaks in like, mm. a, like a big oil slick or something. Right. It goes into places you really don't want it to go. Exactly. Now, oh, the big pond. This is the scary part. I've literally been losing sleep right. over because it's like I have had really bad experiences in the past with great big pores. And that's one of the reasons why we wanted to test this area. But these fish have to be deep in there. This whole pond has to be like an inch and a half deep. Right. Now, um, the instructions from Woodland Scenics says don't pour this stuff more than half an inch deep in any one pour. For obvious reasons, I imagine. For obvious reasons. So we're just, again, we're going to follow the, the instructions. So I'm starting here by heating this stuff up. I also found, uh, as we've been working with this, that really heating it up, uh, if you can get it up to around 120 degrees, it probably cuts down your working time, but boy, it sure makes the stirring go so much smoother. Right. Now notice when you start stirring it, it's pretty cloudy. Yeah, that's just, that's almost unsettling. And, uh, but what I found is if you, as you stir it, it just suddenly reaches a point. And I do mean suddenly 
where it turns crystal clear and that's how you can tell that it's completely stirred. And they say stir for five minutes. Um, but look at that. That is just unreal. Chemical reaction, I guess. But almost at exactly five minutes. Wow. Bingo. It's it just, just clear. goes crystal clear. That is amazing. But you, the, at least that way you know when it's ready. Right. Now, I wanted to get it down in and among the fishy fish here. Right. So I'm using the stick to daub that because I know that bubbles will get trapped under the fish. Right. And I don't want that. So I'm making sure to, before I pour this in here, make sure that there's a good coating all over the fish and getting down under the fish so that I'm not going to get trapped air bubbles. Well, or some big reaction with what the fish are made out of, which yeah, is Sculpty Clay. Which is Sculpty Clay. Well, we already tested the Sculpty Clay. We test everything. We do, but boy, there's always that chance of it's, failure. Oh, man, it, failure is mm -hmm. not just an option. It's almost don't a guarantee. Don't want to go there. Yeah, don't want to go there. Anyway, then I took uh, the remaining six ounces. I did a six ounce batch here and I just poured it in there on top of the fish. I actually mixed up four of these batches from two different kits and that brought us all the way up to half an inch deep. Wow. Um, so it's like, oh man, oh, I, I just man. used up $50 worth of this stuff just to reach the first half of an inch. It's scary, but you know we want it to look good. It's going to be good, but uh, let's not exceed the half inch. It was tempting to just keep right on going, but it's like, no, the don't instructions do say don't go past half an inch. And so we said, okay, we're done for the night. Right. And uh, we'll let this set up. But uh, I could understand why, because at this point, it started to heat up. Oh. And we hadn't run into that. When I've done pours in the past with other products, they get really hot. In fact, I ruined a model once. Oh. I, I poured it and it melted the plastic model that oh, I had in there. Oh, goodness. I just threw the whole thing away. But this stuff has never heated up on us. But once we got it half an inch deep. It did. Two complete kits and a big pile like this. And it started to smell a little bit like, you know, some material. And I think what was happening, it was actually heating up the the uh, styrene, the extruded styrene underneath here. Oh, that could be. And we ended up with some bubbles coming up. Oh no. Over here, and I thought, well, that looks terrible. Uh, hopefully, when we pour the next kit on top of that, we can make this go away. But you know, by now it was already setting up. But just getting over by here, the heat was just radiating off of right. it. Right. And it's like, well, I'm sure glad we stopped at half yes. an inch. Anyway, I'm very happy with how it looks. It looks really neat. And the fishy fish look really neat down in yes, here. Yes, they do. Look at them sparkle. <laughs> and uh, I, I'm just really happy with the first half inch pour. It's starting to look like a pond. It definitely does. Now we'll just keep going in half inch increments. I'm a little concerned that we'll see a seam between the half inch pours. Oh. But we'll know tomorrow when, right. when we pour the next half an inch how that seams into this because we've got the acrylic, the clear acrylic sheet across there. Mm-hmm. And we and can see it. I'll bet we're going to see something of a seam there. I just hope it doesn't look bad because right now it really looks great. I see you have the building in place. I, I had to set it there just to see how it looks. It looks wonderful. <laughs> yeah, I had to move it again before we pour anymore. Right. Well, the next day, Ooh. we're ready to do the next half inch pour. Same exact process. Heat this stuff up, stir it for five minutes, wait for it to turn absolutely crystal clear, and then pour another layer in on top of the existing. I decided to just get right out to the very middle of the pond mm -hmm. and pour it and just let it run out and form its own seam because I was concerned about bubbles getting between the two layers. Right. So I just got right to the very middle, poured the whole thing, and then I thought it's thin enough that it'll probably creep all the way out to the edges and I won't have to deal with that and then I won't get bubbles. But uh, what I found is no, it won't creep all the way out to the No, edges. you've got a nice tidal wave. <laughs> yeah, look, there's a tsunami. Yeah. It's a very slow motion tsunami. Yes, into the big but round thing. I gave it some time and then I thought, you know, I got to get in there with a stick. And, and move it. And encourage it. So I encouraged it all the way out to the edges and then started mixing up more batches and add in those. And this time, I, instead of just pouring it right square in the middle, I got mostly in the middle and then worked my way over toward the edge. 
so that I didn't have to do quite as much encouraging with the stick. Anyway, we mixed up four complete kits that are four complete batches from two complete kits, another fifty dollars worth of material. Right. And um, that brought us all the way up to a full depth of one inch. And for some reason, this time it didn't heat up as much. Hmm. I bet it was reacting with the the styrene or whichever that yeah, purple the, stuff is the made out of. Extruded foam yeah. or something. Whatever in the it base is. Or whatever. Yeah. Um, there's no telling with this stuff, but um, I usually don't go wrong if I just follow the instructions. Right, they're there for a reason. They're it's been there. tried and tested. <laughs> tried and tested, and then yes. we've tested ourselves, right. too. It, it's just I didn't want to spend $100 testing a really big pour. Or you will be poor. <laughs> and we're going to be a little bit poor, I think, by the time we're done with this. Yeah. Anyway, um, I saw on one of the videos on YouTube that a person was having really great success getting rid of those surface bubbles because, you know, before we had that problem with it, by just coming in with a lighter. Smoke on the water? Smoke on the water, and it sure does. Where you get those bubbles coming up like that and it made an irregular surface, just come in with a lighter like that and those bubbles burst and the surface flattens out and it just looks great. Nice. So there's a wonderful tip from YouTube. And sure enough, there's a seam. Uh oh. But uh, it doesn't look too bad. No. But you can definitely see where the first pour ends and the second pour begins just right through the fin of the fishy here. Oh dear. But uh, that doesn't look too bad. No, not really. And it sure looks a lot better than melted scenery and a ruined you know yes so we stuck with the instructions one half inch at a time even though on a clear section like that you can definitely see the scene right well one more half inch pour and i think we're done i see the banker approves yeah, yeah. yes he's, he's I, standing I, over everything there I, <laughs> I wanted to test and see what this would look like with the building in place and and the lights turned on too because I thought, man, that's going to reflect off the pond. That's so going to be neat. Look I hooked that. up power and turned on the lights, and sure enough, man, they reflect off the pond. That is cool. So I had to turn out the room lights and see what it's going to look like at night. And it does look amazing. Oh, doesn't it, though? <laughs> I'm thrilled. We just need to add one more half inch of water in here, and I think we've got a we've pond. We've got us a pond. That's right. Well, we've got to pour another half inch, but that'll wait till next week because we got a show to upload. Yes, we do. <laughs> so we'll be putting this show up in mid-pond, as they say. Yes. Um, at any rate, if you, if you haven't been over to the channel, you can pop over to the channel and you can watch all of the videos leading up to this one about how we got here. And the way to subscribe is with the blue button. Are we ready for that? <laughs> Right there. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> the blue button. Well, we're not sure how you found this video on the internet, and we hope you didn't find it boring. And we will see you on Tuesday with a collectible. Yay! See you then. Bye bye. We'll see ya.